Hi guys, welcome to the Gunshot with me, John. And today we're looking at the first Franchi rifle ever made in the 150 years of their creation. This is the Franchi Horizon. Before we start talking about it, there's a lot of these cool little acronyms with this gun. Uh, Franchi is a Beretta Group owned product and as such they do love their little acronyms. So we'll start with the TSA, the Twin Shock Absorption Pad. There are three stock length pads available for this rifle and they are said to reduce up to 50% of the felt recoil, which is quite good because the rifle is extremely light and especially if it's available in 300 wind mag, you kind of want that. Moving on to the polymer stock, uh, this is actually glass fibre reinforced techno polymer. I know that's quite exciting, but it is, it's a really good feeling polymer. And looking at the flexibility on the fore end, it is really good. It's got some rigidity, it's got no torsion, and the whole thing. As you can see, it has a little bit of Browning x styling about it, which isn't unpleasant the way it looks. And you've got some really lovely lines and features on here. Uh, I believe this is actually the Franchi XS platform or as they call it, exclusive style. All rather nice, really. And the whole stock comes to hand very well. You have very coarse checkering on the side there, and it feels like it's built to last in terms of a rugged, good, working platform. And that's good. For a rifle that costs 599 quid from 599 pounds, I think full retail of about 700 odd, it feels a good quality stock, which is nice. You know, see, so you find a lot of people do skimp in the stock department, these guys, have not. All right, so this is the standard action. As I've said, there is a Magnum action available. So something I'm not entirely sure how it works, but apparently the action, the barrel, and the three lug bolt face are all made from a single piece of steel. Whether that's one piece of steel for all three or one piece of steel each, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but the engineering quality seems very sound. So the stock has a couple of cool features I want to talk about. It has, firstly, built in polymer sling swivels, that's quite nice. And it has a couple of little cutaways. And actually they're really quite ergonomic for holding the rifle. So, uh, or if you had it on a bipod, actually pitching your hand in to grasp the back. I know that it's just silly, but it's all nice and actually it all comes together very well. You also have a slightly wider part around the bolt opening there, around the action. And that just allows you to grab a hold of it if you really need to when you're cycling the bolt or anything. And that fills your hand nicely. It allows very intelligently for a lot of different ergonomic holds, and that, that works. My only downside is actually that the comb for a rifle that is designed with rails is too low. Uh, but that's fine, you know, there's plenty of different adjustable comb options aftermarket out there available to bolt onto this bad boy. So, the bolt, we'll talk about the bolt. We've said it is a three lug bolt. The bolt is released by this little lever here, and this is certainly a cheap rifle. We're going to make it quite clear that £600 is a very cheap rifle. Uh, and at that level, people have to invest in what they see fit. With these guys, I don't think the bolt release was one of them. It's a little bit creaky and it's not the smoothest thing out there, but it works really nicely, so I can't really knock it. It's just a little bit less smooth than its Tika counterparts. The bolt itself is a three lug bolt with a Mauser style back end on it all exposed but actually the whole again the lines of the bolt as I'm sure you can see they flow well it's engineered to go together very well and it's before I talk about the whole rifle seems like they've looked over across the market and you can really pick out well that bit's from that rifle that bit's from that rifle that bit's from that rifle so on and so forth and you can go actually they've looked at all the things that work on other people's rifles they've thrown them together and made this and by the way there is nothing wrong with that whatsoever the bolt cocks on opening, as you can see, and that is great. And you can decock it by pulling the trigger and pulling the bolt down. On the side, 
is a two-stage safety, which is very positive and actually it's quite nice, not, so, not over complicated. The wheel handle is large enough to grasp and sticks out enough. And the bolt throw isn't hideous. There's something about the sound of the bolt cycling on this one that is, it's got some kind of strange hollow feel about it, or hollow sound. It's not, again, it sounds like a bolt action would sound if you wanted a bolt action to sound like a bolt action. Whether you like that or not is, um, it's up to you. There is no magazine, this is a floor plate based rifle, so you have to press this little thing in front of the trigger here, and the whole thing springs out, and it is very springy indeed. Again, nice to see somebody sticking with a floor plate design and not having to put a magazine on and taking money away from the rest of the rifle. The bases are Remy 700 bases, so there's a huge market for bases, and you can pretty much put whatever you want on this rifle. However, it does come as standard with two, with two pieces. The barrel is called Hammer Forge and is a chromoly steel, so actually will have some stainless properties. Hence, it should outlast, if not cleaned, uh, conventional steel barrels. And they are 560 mm long in every caliber, apart from the Magnum, the 300 Win Mag, which is 610 mm. The trigger is adjustable, not superbly easily adjustable, but it is adjustable. And something we will say about the trigger is since we've had this rifle in, uh, it's been tested by a lot of people and had a little feel with, and we kind of got to grips with it with, before doing this video, seeing as we've never seen one before. And the trigger has seen notable improvement since it came in. When it first came in, it was quite heavy but crisp, and now it's quite light but crisp. Uh, read into that what you will, that's all. Uh, the trigger is fully adjustable from 900 grams to 1800 grams, or as we say, back pound to turn a pound and three quarters to three and a half to four pounds. At the moment, it's currently set at just over three, and it is extremely crisp, a really very, very nice trigger. However, for a three pound trigger on the test, as you can see, again, we'll just use the manual. You know, three and a half pound trigger there. A three and a half pound trigger on test, it feels more like a four and a half pound to five pound trigger. However, it is extremely crisp. What it is, is an extremely positive trigger. It's very crisp, there's a little bit of pull through, but not too much. It's well designed, it's well designed. However, I think I'd want to adjust it to its lightest to make it feel its, its lightest, which still won't feel as light as it should be. Uh, but not having worked on one of these triggers, I couldn't tell you how they work quite yet. The barrels are available with open sights or half UNF screw cutting. So to conclude, where does it stand? It's a cheap rifle and essentially what they designed spec was on this was a rifle that could be durable, ergonomic and accurate. Uh, they are accurate, they're guaranteed a sub MOA, they're damn ergonomic. I think certainly in the budget gun range, this is probably one of the most comfortable guns off the shelf. There's a variety of positions you can hold it in. It's, it's quite an exciting design. Certainly I think it's a very exciting design. But for me, it is a cheap tool. And I think budget rifles, there is as much very variety now uh, as there's ever been. And for me, this is a cheap tool. This is a rifle to buy and use. And the way to upgrade it is to part exchange it for a new one. Uh, I don't think there's a lot to do to it. So it's not like other brands where you can buy it and then invest a lot of money afterwards. This is a rifle you buy to do the job and it's gonna do the job very well. My only negative is that it is, there's a touch, it's a touch higgledy-piggledy on the design front. It hasn't committed to any route one way or another, but that's not bad. It is beautiful in, in the way it's beautiful and it's good in the way it's good. And for £599, I really struggle to pick a hole in it. It is probably one of the better budget rifles I've seen in a long time. And that's something, actually. That does count for something. My real interest would be to see how these rifles perform long term because it appears you're getting a huge amount for your money. But with all budget rifles, there is corners cut to get them to the price point destination they need to be. And that is as much as I have to say about it. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, goodbye, and we'll see you next time.